In this video, we will, we will learn how to constrain an output path. So this is the portion of the path we are interested in. Again, if you want to look at the full path, this is the path we started. So we first, with one video we had on flop to flop, then we had a video on the input side, and now we're looking into third path. Third path, the end point is this, and launch point or start point is this. Okay, let's go back to, back to that. Okay, let's stay here. So you see clock comes here, there's a launch and say so arrival seems so arrival clock to queue so this is clock to queue is a net delay again i already explained this this timing arc information comes from the standard cell library once you have transition time here tool will know how much capacitance is here for capacitance either it's estimated or actual one if it's an actual one if it's an sta tool it needs to read resistance and capacitance which is called a extraction file so extraction tool like star rc can be run on the routed database and relax all kind of resistance capacity which are connected to this net then uh, sta tool will um, calculate what is the effective capacity single capacity which can represent um, all of the parasitics so once you have this capacity and you this transition time tool will calculate the delay from sensor lib now assuming there is already a transition time coming here which previously so assuming this is where is it with the transition time okay this thing is copy i'm assuming this thing exists i should actually do this set oops set input transition whatever value is 50 get port i'm also assuming we have uh, this clock definition there too oops it's not too big let's make it smaller so once we have these two then we have we will know okay at least this one for the transfer we don't need and also i think i will look i will um, open a timing report in the next video once we have now three type of paths constraint i will open up a flop to flop timing report and input path timing report and upper timing report and you will see that okay tool needs a starting edge typically starting edge is zero so if you have a if you have this waveform right you assume this is zero and this is the period okay so launch is always zero and capture is the period of the clock that's what i mean so even though we say no clock period needed here but oops it's, it's actually it's actually needed and it's zero Let's remove that okay so with this one and this one we have this this timing arc and here okay what about the required time we need a period okay for the period so we have this definition hmm, actually hold on so just like input delay we were assuming the path is driven from another block in this case maybe this signal is leaving the chip or leaving your block within the chip and entering another block on the chip let's assume this goes to another block on chip so what we have is i already drew that okay so let's say we have this scenario this signal enters another block goes to its port let's call it into port goes to maybe another or gate and then goes to a capture flow with ff3 so that's the clock is captured on now this clock assuming it's, it's the same but somewhere it's distributed from the top level here and from top level it goes here so it, it doesn't it's not connected this leaves here and this is that's not the case sorry. okay but it's the same clock now question is you need and we have the, this one is not visible this one up, but this impact this delay need to be modeled somewhere and then there is a 
setup time here that is required and so first we need to mention this delay so where you can say so t arrival is t c k to q and this is t net one way is that this delay here all the way to d you mention as part of arrival okay i think that would be fair this is t external okay um, i'm just calling it from here all the way here this t external actually can contain output to into that's the net delay there is another net delay inside which is this then there is a to let's say this a pin this is out so within our gauge you have a to out and there is a net here there's a delay that's the whole thing is t external so with this one we arrive here and we are giving here so we kind of modeling arrival here okay in that case let me rub that So what we need is required, we need here, then what was the period? Again, we are sitting inside, we're just modeling this thing. So we are assuming on the capture side, there's a period. For this clock, which doesn't exist in your design, even though we know that top level is the same connection, but this guy, I mean, this block here, doesn't know that it's getting the same clock. We need to tell it. So it needs the clock definition. So this clock, just like the input delay side, do you remember that? We define this clock. Copy and paste. So what we need, we define a virtual clock. And we just, oh yeah, sorry, we, we can give it a, uh, name I missed that in the previous video okay, so we create a virtual clock and when we gave an input delay in this case it's output delay output it's it's output at uh, the output oops it, it is at the output port okay so at output delay 100 clock we already defined so now it knows the period and what about this setup that's here this is also something we need to ask another block owner all the full chip guy because that guy will have visibility into this and that or we just make some whatever setup from here add some more value and assume it's a similar one Whatever easy, you know, estimation is always better to be more um, pessimistic. Um, so you can, what if you were using 50, maybe use 100 here, worst case, and just model that. So once you have this setup, um, but this setup, how will you apply this setup? So typically what is done here, I'll tell you. Uh, typically what is done here, um you can do this you can put combine this with this right in this case you are only left here with period and this setup is kind of added delay here right or what you do is you typically in the reports what is done here this thing is brought here and this is this whole thing comes at set output okay i already did this here so this thing has maybe apply additional 200 because you are putting the delay plus the setup time is applied on the capture side not the launch side but it, it doesn't matter right just just how tool will take it so tool typically put in output delay always comes in the capture and i'll show you timing report actually text timing report and I'll, that that will help you clarify that okay i think now we have um, oh yeah, yeah one other thing even though we we applied 
at delay here but in order to estimate here the capacitance we also need to know what kind of capacitance this net at least is seeing right so this one is applied as a load here so again when you think of that you don't have any anything here so just assume there's nothing like that i'm just bringing it back so what you need to do oops what you need to do is have another command here set load let's say it's 20 femtofarad and say get port out so remember on the input side here you need to apply a transition time but on the output side output port you need to apply a capacitance then tool will consider this capacitance capacitance net and then it will model it correctly otherwise this otherwise this assumed there's no capacitance connector which is not the case i mean even though we have included the delay but we need to include capacitance i think with these all things now our output path is constrained so this concludes our three type of timing paths um, input timing path output timing path and flap to flap timing path there is actually one other part that I'm, I'm thinking previously I was thinking not to include but probably better to include that's called feed through path and that I will include in the next video I think that's it for now see you in the next video bye